You've probably heard of Scientology. In fact, every six seconds, someone searches the question, what is Scientology? There's a lot of talk about us, and we get it. People are curious. Well, we want to answer your questions. Because frankly, whatever you have heard, if you haven't heard it from us, I can assure you, we are not what you expect. <laughs> um, did you have a, any interaction with, with David Miscavige? I did. I met him and uh, was in the same room with him being briefed for three or four straight days at one point in 1996, along with many other staff. And I received orders from him and directions from him from time to time. But he was about three levels up above where I was at. So, and is he, is he looked at the same way as L. Ron Hubbard was? I mean, when they talk about oh, him, almost has more he taken so. more so? At this point, I would say it's almost more so. L. Ron Hubbard is very central to the entire dogma and core Scientology. He's the one who wrote all the books and gave all the lectures and ultimately is the one who is called source in Scientology with a capital S. Miscavige is the one who took over and has been leading the charge, but most Scientologists experience of Scientology up to now mostly involves David Miscavige because L. Ron Hubbard died all the way back in 1986. So it's really only very old veteran Scientologists who are still around remembering Hubbard. So David Miscavige has been the voice and uh, face of Scientology since 1987. Uh, Chris Shelton, uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Good luck in um, your continued recovery, as, as, as I guess you termed it. Um, and we appreciate getting that insight tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk more about uh, Leah Remini's lawsuit, plus coming up next hour. In the Bahamas, a love triangle and divorce turned into an alleged murder-for-hire plot. Lindsay Shiver is accused of cheating on her husband, Robert, then soliciting a third man with her lover to kill him. We are live in the Bahamas, tracking down the suspects and investigating the case. Lindsay, you want to say anything about the allegations? Any message to Robert or the boys? A man married six times. Four of his wives died under mysterious circumstances. Eccentric widower Thomas Randolph. Charged with the murders of his wife and the man he allegedly paid to kill her. A 2017 conviction overturned. The plan between Mr. Miller and Mr. Randolph was to kill Sharon. Now he faces a jury once again. The Widower Murder Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings at 8, 7 central on Court TV. In 2006, Ms. Ramini and her husband attended the wedding of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes in Italy. Cruise, David Miscavige's best friend, is essentially second in command in Scientology. Ms. Ramini was shocked to discover that David Miscavige's wife, Michelle, Shelley, Miscavige, was nowhere to be found. When Ms. Ramini asked a group of Scientology executives and Tom Cruise's personal handlers, where is Shelley, she was immediately admonished by the group. While in Italy, Ms. Ramini called her Scientology assistant and asked her to type up a series of internal reports, sharing her concerns about the behavior she had witnessed and expressing her concern about Ms. Miscavige's health and safety. When Ms. Ramini returned to Los Angeles, she was ordered to go to Clearwater, Florida, to the Flag Land Base Building, also known as Flag. Ms. Ramini was held at Flag for four months while she was put through a process called the Truth Rundown. Simply put, Truth Rundown is a form of psychological torture meant to rewrite the target's memories. After months of psychological torture, Ms. Ramini was nearing the point of psychotic breakdown. She finally gave in and rescinded all of her reports. After leaving Scientology, Ms. Ramini filed a missing person report on Shelley Miscavige, who has not been seen in public for 17 years. 
Again, that is from the lawsuit filed by Leah Remini against the Church of Scientology and David Miscavige, who is the um, the leader of, of the church uh, at this point. Um, she also sent out a tweet. Um, take a look at this tweet. This is really interesting as well. One of the last times I saw Shelley Miscavige, pictured with us is Barbara Ruiz, who has also been disappeared by David Miscavige. Both of these women were in David Miscavige and Tom Cruise's inner circle. They haven't been seen in over 15 years. Part of what's going on in this lawsuit, and now she says she's being harassed and stalked, et cetera. Want to get more insight? Joining me right now from Castle Rock, Colorado, former member of the Church of Scientology, president of the Aftermath Foundation, and expert witness in Danny Masterson's rape trial. Uh, Claire Headley is with us. Claire, great to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. First, I'd like to get your response or your reaction to Leah filing this lawsuit. Um, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think the reaction of the, of the church will be? And do you think we will ever see a trial in this case? Well, a few different comments. Um, obviously, we will see how, it, how this plays out. Um, first of all, Scientology has not won a jury trial ever. Um, simply the facts of any case presented to a jury are damning. So that's just a, a piece of information to put out there. Um, second of all, Scientology for seven decades has gotten away with relentlessly pursuing, harassing, and attempting to silence anybody who dares to say anything about Scientology publicly. That, that applies to someone who's an ex-Scientologist or even just a comedian making a joke on a, a stage at an award ceremony, for example. And Scientology has gotten away with this as a tax-exempt organization that has accumulated billions of dollars. My, my own family has been harassed for 18 years, including having our phone records um, obtained, our trash purchased, uh, private investigators stalking us, photos taken of my young children. Uh, it's no joke, and they get away with this in today's world. And um, so my hat's, hat is off to Leah Remini for standing up to this bullying organization and calling them to task on what they've been getting away with for decades. What do you suspect would be their reaction if this thing goes to trial and we've got cameras inside the courtroom and... Everyone, I mean, everyone's going to tune in. They're going to, they would tune in for this one. But I don't think anyone's ever right. seen a public trial uh, involving um, the Church of Scientology and one of their former celebrity members. Um, what do you think the reaction would be to that scenario? Well, first of all, let's point out that the alleged response from this alleged church is not even signed by a human being. It's an unnamed statement uh, from who knows who um, that alleges some pretty outrageous statements. Um, the facts of the matter are that there are some pretty damning evidence from many, many people who have been harmed and attempted to be, in Scientology's words, muzzled, silenced, destroyed utterly. That, those are the words of the founder of Scientology as to how to deal with anyone who speaks publicly about Scientology. So in my opinion, it will be very interesting to see how this plays out because there is absolutely ample evidence um, of the claims being made here, in my opinion, and not having seen any evidence, but just speaking from what's been done to me personally. So you, your, your mother was a, a part of the church and that's how you became part of it. What was the moment for you when you're like, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm getting out. And then what happened to you when, when you reached that point? Yes, fair question. Um, I was born and raised in Scientology. Um, at the age of 16, I began um, my billion year contract of service in the so-called C organization, which is Scientology's paramilitary organization whose members commit to a billion years of service of management of Scientology. Um, so at the age of 16, I began working at Scientology's headquarters. It's a 500-acre, extremely secluded compound in Gilman Hot Springs, California. 
Uh, my parents were made to sign over guardianship of me. They did not know where I was physically located. I then spent eight years working directly under David Miscavige in Religious Technology Center. It's the highest ecclesiastical organization in Scientology. Um, and in January 2005, my husband, Mark Headley, escaped from that compound on a motorcycle. Uh, he was run off the road by security, a passerby called 911. Uh, the only reason he was successful in his escape is because Riverside County Sheriff's Office responded. Um, I was left, <laughs> left at the secure compound with a, a really tough um, situation. It really um, made me realize how miserable I'd been. I'd witnessed David Miscavige uh, personally, physically abusing staff uh, many, many times, top executives in Scientology, uh, Mike Rinder, Norman Starkey, Mark Yeager. I could go on and on and on listing the people I saw David Miscavige physically abuse. Um, when my husband escaped, it really brought me to a crisis, if you would call it that. And I had to um, devise my own escape plan, uh, which I enacted three weeks later, um, towards the end, end of January 2005. Um, I was pursued from California across state lines to Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I, they threatened to follow me all the way to Kansas City, where I was um, heading to reunite with my husband. Um, so yeah, it was it was not an easy task to get out of there. When you say escape, and you know everyone is conjuring up like, you know, you're an adult. This is America. You're not in prison. Why would you need to escape? Do you have to physically escape? Is, this, is it a psychological escape? What, oh no, it's absolutely a, a very physical escape. I had a security escort I had to run away from who then <laughs> pursued me. And then I had four staff members, like I said, follow me across state lines from California to Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, confront me at, in the Las Vegas bus station telling me that they were going to take me take me back. They called my husband and said, we caught her, she's not coming. Um, and I had to quite literally sit on the floor of the bus station and hope that if they tried to physically grab me and take me out of there, if I screamed, that maybe somebody might pay attention and call 911. Wow. Have, have, you ever, have you ever filed charges or filed a lawsuit against them? My husband and I did file a lawsuit in 2009 for various causes of action. Um, that lawsuit was dismissed in the end. Um, the judge said that had we pursued other causes of action, such as false imprisonment, assault and battery, et cetera, we may have fared differently. Um, as it was, it was a legal um, situation where we just simply didn't have the correct resources to go up against a billion dollar organization. It was a David and Goliath situation and we failed. Um, and we paid their legal fees um, because they said that if we did it, they, they had offered us that if we um, would uh, agree to never speak publicly about Scientology ever again, uh, turn over the rights to my husband's book, Blown for Good, Behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology, turn over any and all information of any communication we'd had with any ex-Scientologists or any media contacts, they would waive that bill. Uh, we decided to pay it anyway, so we paid them approximately $43,000 so as to not be silenced. Well, I'm glad you haven't been silenced, and I'm so glad that you joined us tonight. Uh, Clara Headley, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Incredible insight we're getting tonight from uh, former members. Okay, when we come back, uh, we're going to have a journalist who's been covering Scientology for years. We'll get his take on this lawsuit and Danny Masterson, who's about to be, uh, or Danny Masterson, who's about to be sentenced uh, for two rapes of former Scientologists. That's next. These are the cases that captivated the world. Can keep my life straight. That demanded our attention. They were killed by their own children. That challenged the legal system and ourselves. How in the world can a mother wait 30 days before reporting her child missing? These are the trials that became legendary. Jeffrey! And now you can relive them all in one place. Court TV Legendary Trials. Go to courttv.com slash legendary trials to find out how to watch.
In 2013, Ms. Romini formally and publicly left Scientology and became an outspoken public advocate for victims of Scientology. As a result, beginning in 2013 and continuing to this day, defendant Miscavige and the other defendants began to level one of their most coordinated and malicious assaults against Ms. Romini. Defendants enlisted dozens of current and former Scientologists to record videotaped messages to make disparaging and false claims against Ms. Romini, including false and defamatory statements that she was abusive to her mother and daughter and that she is a racist. Defendants also used and manipulated Ms. Romini's estranged and now deceased father, George Romini, and his third wife, Dana, to make false statements about Ms. Romini including that she is a liar, that she only wanted to have her name in the news, that she would not help to pay for his cancer treatments. These false statements were posted to websites created and controlled by defendants. While Ms. Romini was in New York in 2015 to promote her book, she became aware that she was being followed by private investigators hired by defendants. These private investigators followed Ms. Romini to and from her hotel and to and from all interviews and media appearances. Defendants hired surveillance consistent with Scientology directives was so intimidating that it made Ms. Romini fear for her physical safety. More of the allegations from Leah Remini in her lawsuit against the Church of Scientology. Let me bring in our next guest joining us tonight from Scarsdale, New York, journalist and author on Scientology, Tony Ortega. Tony, great to see you. Um, what are your thoughts uh, about this lawsuit and the possibility of this thing going to trial with cameras in the courtroom? How do you think the church would respond to that? Thanks for having me on, Vinny. Uh, well, listen, you, in your introduction, you made a really great point about religions in general and litigation. And I just want to point something out right from the beginning. In this 60-page complaint, there is not a single word about the beliefs of Scientology. I mean, the beliefs of Scientology are pretty weird. It's about past life therapy and invisible alien beings attached to you. Leah Remini does not have a word about that. This is about the practice of harassing former members and retaliate, uh, retaliating against them, and specifically in ways that have harmed her ability to make a living. That's why I think this is such a powerful lawsuit, Penny, is that it, it has specifics about the ways that the things she was working on, documentary, uh, podcast, uh, her game show, have all been harmed materially by Scientology's coordinated attacks. And I know Scientology is going to come back and say, this is about free speech. We can call her names all we want to. And I think that Leah's legal team is very smart. They know how there's been numerous lawsuits from ex-Scientologists in the last 10 years. They have learned from those lawsuits. They are anticipating Scientology's attacks. And one of them is they're going to say this is just free speech. And this lawsuit lays out that it's not just about name calling, that it's about action that it's about activities undertaken by the church to harm her materially. And I think that's what make it, makes it such a powerful lawsuit. As far as a trial, you know, Vinny, civil lawsuits tend to be settled. And, I, I, I know uh, they do. Is, the only reason I'm saying it's different, it, could this be different because the motivation? I mean, when we covered Johnny Depp's lawsuit, that was never about money, right? That was about Johnny Depp wanting right. to get in court and wanting to show the world, right? Is that what you think this right. one is about? I think you're right. And, and one thing that proves that is it, early in the lawsuit, uh, in the complaint, Leah spells out that she just does, it's not just about money. It's about she wants to change Scientology's practices. She wants a court to uh, give injunctive relief that will prevent Scientology from attacking people in the future. So she's got her eye on, on real change that she hopes this lawsuit will, will, will make happen. The reason why I say that a trial may be difficult is that David Miscavige cannot afford for this thing to be in court. Claire Headley just before me was talking about that, that juries do not like Scientology. Uh, the press would eat up any testimony being given in court. 
Uh, another example, uh, Laura DiCrescenzo was a Scientologist who sued in 2009. It took her nine years to get to trial uh, through various just really difficult hurdles. And literally a couple of days before that trial was going to start, David Miscavige wrote a big check and made it all go away. So, I, I, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see if Leah can get this into court. But uh, along the way, it's going to be amazing because she's going to be introducing incredible evidence about the church. Scientology is going to fight in ways that will blow people's minds. We've seen it in the other cases. They are no, they have no shame, Vinny. They will they will file the most of you. Well, you saw that response. It's off the hook. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's how Scientology act. And that's how Scientology acts in court. So it's really going to be a, a lot of fun to watch. Let me ask you this uh, on, an, on a different case, and I, I know you're in, involved covering that as well. Danny Masterson, convicted rapist. He's got to be sentenced. You know, when a lot of people are sentenced, they bring in the priest, they bring in the pastor to speak on their behalf. Do you think David Miscavige or anyone from the Church of Scientology will come in and speak on behalf of Danny Masterson, the convicted rapist? Well, I think in cases like this, what happens is they submit letters. Isn't that how it usually works? And I have, you know, and it's a criminal case, so there's not a public file. So we don't know yet what's being filed on his behalf. But I have a feeling right now that court is getting sent lots of letters from family members, possibly other Scientologists. Would David Miscavige write something? I kind of doubt that. He probably would not want to be associated with it. But uh, I hope that those letters become public after the sentencing, and then we can see who was, who was speaking up on Danny's behalf. And are there still c civil cases related to those, um, to what happened to the, to, to the accusers, the victims in the Danny Masterson case? Right. The criminal case? Are there civil cases? The Danny Masterson? Yes, the Danny Masterson accusers filed a harassment lawsuit against Danny and the Church of Scientology in 2019, the year before he was actually criminally charged. That lawsuit has been on hold until after Danny is sentenced. Okay, so there's a, another opportunity. That one, I think, will be well, settled. Well, and for that sure. one's about that one's about her. That one's about harassment. It's about that these women are saying since they came forward to the LAPD, they've been stalked, harassed. Their, po their pets have been poisoned, which is kind of a classic Scientology accusation. Uh, and that's going to be a very interesting case. But like I said, it, we're waiting for that one. That one's on hold. And how about you? What, have they come after me? Yeah, they come <laughs> after you. Yeah, I've been writing about Scientology uh, for, uh, uh, gosh, how long has it been now? More than 20 years. And uh, they, yeah. They come after me, but see, they're they're such cowards, Vinny. They don't they don't come after me. They send private investigators to intimidate my mother. They 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 have they have they've had a private investigator pretend he's a reporter in order to create a scandal involving my wife. I mean, they just do these really slimy things. That's why it's really interesting to see Leah Remini suing over that kind of thing because so many other people have experienced what she has. Well, Tony, I appreciate your time tonight and and your insight. Uh, we'll speak again. Yeah, thanks, Vinny. All right. When we come back, something else you absolutely need to know tonight, plus coming up next hour. In Los Angeles, California, the allegations against singer and entertainer Lizzo continue to grow, with more dancers joining the lawsuit. We have the latest. Some of it's not safe for TV, but you got to read the complaint. There's, it's involved sex objects and fruit in sexual orifices. And this is something that Lizzo and her management team is alleged to have participated in directly. A man married six times. Four of his wives died under mysterious circumstances. Eccentric widower Thomas Randolph. Charged with the murders of his wife and the man he allegedly paid to kill her. A 2017 conviction overturned. The plan between Mr. Miller and Mr. Randolph was to kill Sharon. Now he faces a jury once again. The Widower Murder Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings at 8, 7 central on Court TV.
Uh, Bonanza Creek Ranch has had two people accidentally shot on a movie set by a prop gun. Was it loaded with a real bullet or one? We don't, I, don't, I cannot tell you that. So you tell me what to do. Okay. You tell me what to do. Just tell um, me. We would appreciate that, and then we'll... We knew I'm going to do that. Uh, we're going to probably go right now. Well, there were three firearms that were located on uh, the set within uh, close proximity to the uh, to the incident. You have the right to stop questioning at any time or stop questioning for the purpose of consulting a lawyer. So my only question is, am I being charged with something? All right, something else you absolutely need to know tonight. Take a look on the screen here. Dave